HDF5 supports an idea called chunking. And this is one of the fundamental beginning points where HDF5 begins to differentiate itself from other types of file formats. Chunking acts at the dataset level. So a dataset can either be linear or it can be chunked. It is one or the other, it is not both. A linear dataset is what you might imagine the simple way of laying out data in, in a dataset would be. So if you have a two-dimensional dataset and it's linear, then it's literally laid out, right? Linearly in memory, un, in a, in a, in a, in a, or, in, or actually more specifically in, in disk space because this is, these are files. It's laid out linearly, contiguously, starting at the first element and going all the way over in either you know C style or Fortran style alignment doesn't particularly matter. But the key is that it is an uninterrupted stream uh, or block of contiguous data. And what that means is that if you go to try to load and read this linear data set into your uh, into 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 your program, um, this is also sometimes considered uh, called a contiguous data set. Um, then it has to read the entire data set completely into memory before the operation is complete. It's it's an atomic, fully consistent block of data. Now you might imagine that's probably not used very commonly for large types of data sets. If you had a data set that had 10 billion elements of 10 billion doubles in it, right? You probably, or 100 billion or a trillion doubles in it, you probably wouldn't want to write that out as a linear or contiguous data set because that would be an immense amount of memory to try to load all at once into RAM. As a result, because there are these other operations and you want to, and, and HDF5 is designed to support very large representations of data, then this idea of a chunked data set was created. And a chunked data set is exactly as it sounds. It is chunked, meaning what H5 does is it comes in and it takes what would otherwise be a very large data set, right? Something that could be huge. Let's say this is, you know, 10 million this way by, by you know, 50 million that way, or 100, how say it's 100 billion that way by 10 million this way, right? Or 100 million that way, whatever numbers may be. It will go in and actually chunk up, and this is just a 2D data set that we're working with just for illustrative purposes. It will chunk up your data set into fixed, blocks and store each one of these now as in an indivisible contiguous element. But then it will throw these blocks around in any order that it wants and it will keep a binary tree index of every single one of the locations of each of these little chunks. And thus when you go to try to you know read your one and a half terabyte data set that may be sitting on, on your file, but you only need, say, a tiny portion of it. Um, let's say, and I'm not going to draw all of this out, but we'll, we'll draw out this part. Let's say, for just for illustrative purposes, you need this region of, the, uh, of your, of your two-dimensional matrix, of your two-dimensional data set. Well, if it's a chunk data set, then you're in great shape because H5Pi will just index over right through this binary tree, find those particular chunks associated with the indexes into your 2D data set that you're looking for that you tried to go and pull just those out and hand them to you. It will not bother reading any of this other stuff that you're not asking for. And this is a huge advantage compared to a linear data set or a contiguous data set. There are many other types of file formats out there that only operate in this sort of linear or contiguous framework where if you write it all down and you want to access even one byte out of that data set, you've got to load the entire thing into memory. 
many other programming languages or file formats operate in that way and it is an immense waste of time and IO and and effort when a more intelligent layout like you can do with HDA5 and some of these more advanced file formats allow you to arbitrarily pick out the sections of your data set that you want now that also means that you may have a decision to make right you actually have control over what the chunk size is but by default HDA5 will just pick an automatic chunk size based on your based on the total shape of the data set you're providing and that will do okay in most cases we can will there will be videos later on that talk about how to pick an optimal chunk size and what the trade-offs are but that's not appropriate for an introductory introductory uh, lecture on this topic just now but this is the first idea of how data sets in HDF5 get more interesting and and chunking forms the basis for more advanced operations uh, that filters can then provide, which we'll get into in the subsequent videos.